I'm Jeremy Tetrell from Forest Lake, Minnesota. I'm down here in Minnetonka getting fit for a driver with Tyler Fitzel. But ball speed's really the king. I don't care how fast he's playing. I've been playing golf since I was, seriously, since I was 13. So I played junior high, high school. After that, played college at Concordia St. Paul. So always been around the area. Since I was 18, I've been competing in state events as well. So MGA events, competed in multiple state AMs, state opens, players championships, biggest accomplishments accomplishment was two years ago I did qualify for the USAM down in Oakmont and that was lifetime achievement accomplished and hope to make another USJ event in the future. I'm here today for a driver. Been playing a sim for quite a while now. Um, just hoping to maybe gain a little bit more yardage and consistency. Misses with the sim can be a little punishing. Sometimes I'll get it off the toe and I'm aiming left trying to play a cut and catching off the toe. It goes left and going left and it's, that's not not what we want. I mean, overall the distance is good, but consistency would be a big thing I'm looking to gain. Hey, I'm Jeremy, and I'm here to get fit like a pro. Good to see you again, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, dead of winter, but actually spring, trying to come out of spring here and, yeah, uh, right. and get lined up. Um, so we're looking at what today? We got driver. Driver is so a big thing today. Three, yep. Yeah. Seeing if we can knock out the old sim. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, it's interesting because like we just saw over the last few weeks on the PGA Tour is like the guys with TaylorMade have kind of been back and forth on, right. the, on the TaylorMade. Yep. And, you know, for, for any driver for that matter, uh, it's just the combination, you know, is like, is that giving you the best kind of numbers to it? And, yep. and this has definitely given us the best numbers as we've gone through, but we've had, what, about two or three fittings in terms of drivers. And, you know, like we're seeing what we can, what we can do to get some better stuff in your hand there. Yep. Um, well, the first thing we'll do is just have you loosen up, and then um, once we've loosened up, um, we'll find out what's happening with your driver. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty good. Yeah, even better. Happy with that one, too. Yeah, there you go. Getting into a groove, too. Eh, a little thin again. Yeah, it's manageable. Yep. Well, let's talk about a couple things. One, as you know, in, in a fitting, what I like to do is I like to kind of talk about three things. There's the swing you make, the club you make it with, and the ball you hit. Yep. So with those three entities, I'm not going to talk about the swing because you deliver that club to the ball the way you deliver it to the ball. That's yep. not changing today anyway. We talk a little bit about that club. In terms of club, I fit towards length and strength, right? There's certain dimensions, whether it is how long that is, whether it's the type of loft, the type of lie angles, those are things that we're looking at in measurables. But I'm also talking about the strength. So when you're moving the club head at 110 to 15 miles an hour, we're going to want to have something that can support that. Yep. It's got to be stable enough. If it's, if it's too light or it's too soft, we don't see the dispersion that we'd like when it's too heavy or maybe even too stiff, is we may lose some of the, yep. the, the numbers that we're looking for. The other part of it is the ball, and there's four things that happen with that ball. Ball speed, launch, spin, and direction. And you can call it dispersion, too, as the, as, as the fourth in terms of that. But ball speed's really the king. I don't care how fast you swing. It's really how fast the ball moves. So we want to see not only the fastest we can get, but we also want to see the consistency. Yeah. Um, have you heard of Smash Factor before? Oh, yeah. So, right, the, the relationship that we talk about is the ball speed limit. And 1.50 or is one and a half times the ball speed to club speed ratio that we're looking for. Yep. Now, even on a miss, right? So we take a look at the last shot was 1.44. That wasn't our best shot, but it still goes straight. It still goes 292. Yep. And so that, that's really good. That's what we're aiming for. Um, if we look back at it in terms of what we could have got out of it, we know that you could be getting about 315 yards out of that shot. So we know this was a miss. Um, the other side of this is we start looking at the other side is we start looking at some of these other shots that you've hit really solid. Um, we're not getting the most ball speed, but we are getting very, very close to that optimal number. Yeah. So we're really getting out of this club in your swing right now. We're getting direction. We're getting ball speed. We're getting good launch. We're getting good spin. Um, so it's ball speed that I'm actually looking at saying, all right, uh, even on this, this is the best of the day. This is wonderful. You're still missing maybe a couple yards of carry, and we're still only 1.48. Now, only, I shouldn't say only, that's really, really good. Yeah. Um, 
But what I like to talk about with technology is to say, all right, this is now about four years old, five years old that the, this tailor made is about four years old. Is there something in the technology that will allow us for more ball speed? Yeah. Because if it is, that, that, that's going to give us some more of that distance. Mm -hmm. But on a, on a consistency factor, I'm not looking for just your perfect. I'm looking for your misses to have more ball speed to get more distance. Yep. Um, technology to me is, is uh, it's material and application, right? So what kind of materials are we using in the current clubs and mm -hmm. how are they applying them that would benefit you? Yep. Um, what is it you're interested in hitting today in terms of brands? Now you have a tailor made. I am wide open. I am, I don't care what brand. So I'm, that's a good thing, I guess, because it doesn't matter. I want to play whatever the best for me. Yeah. I'm not brand loyal. I just want to play the best. I mean, at one point I think I had like six different brand clubs in my bag yeah. just because we used whatever worked best and whatever yeah. it was, it was. Well, I think that, uh, the popular saying is until they start paying me to play this. Yeah. Well, who yeah. cares? And so, well, let's do this. Let's start with the, the, the newest TaylorMade, the yep. Stealth 2, and see how that stacks up Kay. because you've already got a TaylorMade in your hand. Yeah. What is that technology? How is that advanced? Yep. Okay. Oh, so glossy now. Yeah, they have changed it up. Yep. Um, gone away a little bit from the matte finish. Yep. They do have the, let's see, my, my TaylorMade. Yeah. Where you can really change up colors if you wanted to get really expensive. No, thanks. All right. This is the same setup cool. as you've got. Yep. Just uh, Let's hit about four or five shots and just kind of see what this does as a flavor. Okay. Big fan, I think. Yep. Is that right going right? There we go. I don't know if I turned it over or not. Yeah, just, yep. just a hair. Yeah, that was beautiful. Falls over, good ball speed, good launch spin. Thin. How's that miss on this one? There's another good one. Hmm. All right. One, one more. Okay. Okay. Well, let's look at two things. Um, one, let's go back <laughs> to the numbers, and I want to talk a little bit about how, I'm, how I have them set up as well. Uh, the, the first three at the top is what we talked about in terms of what's happening with that ball, right? Ball speed, launch, and spin. Yeah. Um, that's how the ball leaves the club face, right? That's how fast, how high, and how much spin it's got. I like to talk about the next three as how the ball's coming out of the air, right? So we talk about peak height, we talk about landing angle, and we talk about carry distance. Um, carry distance is really important in this process as well because we also want a club that not only just goes far, but it carries as far as we get. Yep. And then in, in that, probably even landing um, somewhere between 40 to maybe even 45, but around 40 degrees yeah. is landing angle is nice because then you're going to get some run out to it as well. Um, as, a as a collection, um, in terms of the numbers here, so we can see is that ball speed didn't really change much. Uh, the launch angle was maybe a little bit higher and the spin was a couple of hundred RPMs higher. The launch or the uh, peak height was definitely higher to that. And I think part of that is we look at the numbers was that you may have had a little bit more launch on this and yeah. not sure why, right? Was that... I caught a couple more thin with my sim yeah, to bring it down a little bit. Exactly. And so like we had, we had one real nice shot here where the, the numbers actually... They, they pan out towards what we're talking about. Yep. But we're still, we're still a little shy, even on your best swing, Yep. where uh, the ball speed sits, right? And so the first thing I'm, I'm looking at this is like good swings are giving us good results, but trying to maximize maybe just a little bit more of that ball speed. Um, all right, let's, let's change uh, companies and try something different. Okay. Um, I want to look at... Uh, Titleist as being a really, really good driver on the market right yep. now. They've, they've made some changes in the new TSR line. Um, we'll look at some other manufacturers as that as well. Yep. So uh, let me grab a Titleist. Yep. I've yet to try anything new, so. All right, Kay. so we got the same setup here, um, just like we did with a TaylorMade. 
We're going to go with, uh, with an eight degree again. Yep. We'll put the weight towards the toe. Okay. And we're going to leave this as kind of that open, flat yep. open setting. Okay. Um, let's put about four or five swings on and see what happens here. Excited for this, haven't heard a lot of good things. Really bad. Good miss. Yeah. All right, that's enough of that. I know it's only three swings, but at the same time, you know, Every looking at it. Every single one spinning off the movement. Uh, yeah, just um, even looking at it, it's kind of from a hit location perspective, is it just low on that face? So we were, I know we were a little bit low on the face with yours. We were a little low on the face with the other, <laughs> but this is low and inside. Um, Weird. Let's change up the setting on that and see if we can do something with the, okay. with the angle on that. You want to grab a glove? Yeah, I got one. So I just put it back in standard as a setting on that. Okay. Oh, it's hit a lot better. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was better. Thin again, but I think honestly it was not having a grip glove on was part of it. Yeah. Just not feeling like these things can come flying out of my hands without that texture on it. Yeah. Yeah, with the, the unfortunate part about fitting in general <laughs> yep. is like, it's hard to put everyone's grip on everyone, you yeah. know, on every piece of club we have. Felt pretty good. Yeah, that's enough for that too. Okay. Even for that matter, um, as we look at whether it's dispersion or we look at some of the numbers, it's like the, for whatever reason, this, this eight degree where we had that, we just like in the lower position or it was open, um, that gave us just a, not a great hit location. Um, that's one of the beauties of TrackMan technology is yep. um, given the right amount of light, it can help pick up some of the hit location. Um, it's an approximation. This isn't, an ag this isn't a Titleist head. So yep. the exact numbers of minus you know, seven millimeters is not specific, but it gives us a general idea. So we know you do come up, upward through the ball and the first part of the club that gets to the ball at coming upward is usually the bottom half of the club. Yep. Um, likewise, the same is true as we go back to the Stealth 2 Plus as we were hitting that. So you actually had a more centralized location than your tailor-made um, sim. So uh, this is a little bit better, right? This is kind of like yep. what you were doing with yours, and we start to see our ball speed in that same position. Um, well, let's try something different. Um, how about the Callaway? Totally open to it. Yeah, yeah the, the, new, the new Paradigm. Yeah, the new Paradigm is, I was just thinking, like Triple Diamond. Yep. Um, that could be really, really interesting. Comes um, in an 8.5. So. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's grab that. Okay. That felt good. Okay. So we, st we started on a great note yeah. with a 1.45 smash factor. We started in a, a wonderful yeah. position. So now... I like that. Let's keep, keep, just keep it up. Yeah, let's uh, see another one. See if we got something here. Yeah, it felt pretty good too. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, as they say, it turned now, into a baby draw, but I mean, that, that's fine. Something. Yeah, and, and for that matter, right, uh, just. Take those three swings, and now, <laughs> as, as we look back on this, all of a sudden, we're yep. talking about ball what? speeds up about three to three and a half miles an hour. Yeah. Launches up, spin is down. So we see that peak height over 100 feet, which is wonderful, but the landing angle around 40. Yeah. This is, uh, like we were talking about earlier, is even like that one shot versus your average. Yeah. So even without our best of our best ball contact, um, not only did our optimal come up from where we were with the TaylorMade at 315, but now you're at 312 with the optimal being about 317. Yep. That's all three in, in, in a row. Let's hit one or two more yep. and just see what this does. Because now, now what I'd like out of you is I'd, I'd like to see you, for one shot here, I'd like to see you go after it. Okay. And then we'll look at maybe uh, your uh, cut. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to put my normal swing, which is a cut, but yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, and 112 for me is an, I mean, granted, I've been cruising at that. That's a new, like, the new cruising speed, which is great. Yeah. Like, I've been doing some speed training this winter. So seeing 112, that used to be the, the, the mash. Yeah. The give it the go, but we'll see right. if we can give, a, give one a little bit more here. A little thin. Okay. But for being thin, it's not spinning too bad. No, that wasn't outrageous. I mean, it's still over 300 yards, which no other driver has done yep. consistently. Yep. Let's see your cut. All right, let's try pulling that normal cut that's turned into a little bit of a draw with this, which is, that's fine. There it is. Yeah, that, and again, that falls over. Yeah, uh, that with spins the, nice with too. With almost the same amount of spin, yeah. Well, okay, so we, <laughs> we talk about, well, we go back to the, the, the things that we're talking about um, with the ball. We see ball speed, we see launch, we see spin in really good parameters. Yeah. Um, we're also seeing the dispersion. So now when you look at this, we're saying, all right, now we've got a driver in your hand that is not only tighter in the dispersion side of it, but oh, also yeah. has the distance to it. For sure. Um, I. I'm looking at this even as it's optimal, right? 316 versus the last couple where we're only 302 yeah. as shots. Uh, but we see a little bit of spin on there. Um, that, that is more than likely just a hit location. As we see, that's a little still a little on the lower side. Yeah, I did right. catch a little, one a yeah. little in there. So um, we can benefit by just like hit location is going to uh, be our, our biggest uh, challenge from that. Because yep. when you do come up through it, like the bottom of the club presents itself before, yep. before anything else. And um, likewise, as you come up, you're also rotating the face a slight bit closed as it's getting to the ball. So that's kind of maybe where we're seeing that, that, that falling over. Um, one of the reasons I don't talk a whole lot about the, uh, what the, the club is actually looking like at the moment of impact, we have the data. I don't know what you do to get it there, right? Like I don't, I don't yeah. have the specifics about whether it was bending this, twisting that, like um, flexing on the right foot versus the left foot. The other part of that is I don't have the, the follow through. So when we talked about the three, the three aspects of the fitting, what's the swing doing, the club doing, and the ball doing, yep. I don't talk much about the club or the swing. I talk more about the club and the ball because that's consistent. It's a little inside out. That means the ball's gonna fall over left. Yep. And we're gonna do that at 300 yards and plus. Sweet. And then we're gonna do it consistent. Well. Now, now I look at this and I'm saying, how do I beat that? Okay. So there's really only a couple other drivers on the market I'd look at. One of them being maybe the Ping and the other one being maybe the Cobra. Yep. Because like this Callaway has absolutely. Oh yeah, set the bar. Yeah, it has. So let's try that though. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's try the Ping and let's try the, the, yep. um, the Cobra. I'm I got more in me. Thin again. Well, that would be really super good for me, <laughs> but that is not going to cut it. Um, as we look at it again, just the uh, the dispersion alone, in, in terms of what we've got there, yeah, uh, we're not seeing the ball speed launch or spin where we'd like it. Um, at this point, like, I, I don't know that anything's gonna beat that, that Callaway. Yeah. And so one of the things we try to do is, is about four or possibly five drivers with yep. that. Um, the idea though, um, we, we've been using the same exact shaft, we've been using the same exact weight, the same exact flex, the same exact length yep. as we've gone through this. And the only club that's absolutely kind of blown your current TaylorMade sim out of the water is Callaway. The Callaway. For sure. For me, that's the road I'm going down now. Yep. I'm even looking at this saying, all right, you've been playing with a Ventus shaft. Yeah. Uh, this uh, is the, the Ventus Black 7X. Yep. Probably the best shaft as we talk about it all around yep. for its dispersion, its consistency. We see these in just about every single bag on the, on the PGA Tour. The LPGA's got a lot of them as well. Um, they've got a new version out called the TR. Yep. And that's actually what's in the Callaway that we were using. Oh, interesting. And that's also what we've been using in testing um, these others. 
So that's one of the things I'm looking at going, all right, it's just a newer updated version to that. Yep. But if we are going to get something, that's probably what I'm looking at already. I want to see if there's something else Kay. in the Callaway yep, that, that, maybe, might. that maybe does something Kay. different to cool. that. All right, so okay. gone to a different, uh, different club here, uh, or different, gone back to the Callaway and gone with a different shaft to kind yep. of s see what happens. Cool. Titch to the toe so it don't hook too much. Nope. See, I'm just expecting that thing just to be carving left with my old... Yeah. With my sim, if I caught a ball off the toe like that, man, that thing's just carving left. There's that thin one again. A little bit. Eesh. All right. It's okay. Yep. But one of the reasons we wanted to try something like this is a, this is a, a shaft that's in their lineup at no upcharge. Yep. And so when we're talking about a shaft like you've got, which is in that neighborhood of about $400 um, as an upcharge, it's not quite as much when you go through these companies. Yep. But still, as an upcharge, it's taking a, a pretty expensive driver and making it more expensive. At yep. the same time, I like the fact that we're taking a, a sim that's been around for quite a while and we're actually making um, an upgrade in both the technology side of it. Yep. But we were also seeing a little bit of the technology upgrade in the shaft. Too. Yeah, sure. So I always like to see is like, yes, these are different shaft offerings that are very similar to what you're doing. Yep. But it, it didn't produce the consistency. Let's go back to that. Um, um, black. The, the, yeah, the Ventus TR. Black the TR for a couple swings. Yep. And see if we, we maintain the consistency that we had with that. Cool. Yeah. Not even that, like, wasn't great, but it wasn't bad for sure. The spin was pretty consistent, even with some misses. Yeah, it's it's a little bit softer, I yep. say, as a profile. Definitely. Like, I, I've swung it before, and I know it has that little softer feel. Yeah. And since we've been working together so long, I've always liked a board. Yeah. I don't know why, I've, I mean... I've watched it. I watched the videos for Second Swing. It's kind of like Rocco. He just likes that super stiff feel. He knows where it's at because the right. shaft isn't really doing too much. Well, the advancement between the Ventus Black that you had and the Ventus Black TR is they've got a wrap um, that has really stiffened up yeah. the handle section, and you it, they've kind of exposed it so you can see there's yep. a little bit yeah. more of a. Uh, carbon, carbon fiber, fiber weave that's going on there and yep. that's helped to strengthen what was already probably one of the strongest out there. Yeah. Um, so that it maybe even feels more boardy. Oh, toe, did it hang on? Kind of. Yeah, it was probably well, the worst miss there. It's interesting. Um, it did, with, it did low yeah. with, with low enough spin, right? 314 is, again, one of the longest. So... Yeah, I guess that didn't really dive bomb for 1600. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe it did a little bit. 287 though with that? That's really good. That, yeah, it is. I was expecting that thing to just be carving left, short, yeah. not carrying, but that carried still. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that was impressive. That felt good again. Oh. Hey, there's a the cut. Well, there's the cuts. <laughs> yeah. There. There is the cut swing with it. There, there you go. That's ball speed. I was going to say, did I end good on a launch, good launch? Good spin. Spin was a little bit lower on that. It's a little turned over again. Yeah, a little facey closed. Yeah, that's probably just hit location, maybe. A little low, so it got a little spinny right there. Still, it's carrying. Again, it's carrying 284. Yeah, when we look at it from, from this perspective in terms of carry distance, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We see that this is carrying farther, as far or farther than what you had in your driver. Yeah. Right? Then we go to the total side, and again, we see that this is going as far or farther, and especially on average. Oh, yeah, for um, sure, the average. So... If we go back to uh, a quick comparison between where we where we started and where we are, carry distance wise, 
see the 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 blue is the Callaway. Yep. Right. So front moving, to back is yeah, so, super tight. So move yeah. So we're moving left to right um, on the the scale, but right that's the carry distance. And that that one left one for the, this driver was a big toe. It's okay. I didn't expect that thing to do. Okay, half that so well. even if you want to compare the left and the big toe. Oh yeah. That's still carrying a more, heap, way way more. longer. Right. Is that keeps the ball in the air. Yeah. The other side is that the total is more consistent for that as well. Yeah. Is we're looking at it kind of as a as a beginning, uh, you know, a before and after picture. Yeah. 163 ball speed to 66. All right, so we picked up. That was one of our goals. Yep. Launching it at about 14 and 2300 spin versus 11 and 2400. Yep. So we increased launch, but didn't necessarily do anything with the spin rate. That's our carry distance. Yep. So both ball speed, which is on average every one mile an hour is about two and a half yards. Yep. Um, but we also got that carry dis or that carry distance up by having the launch up without redu uh, with without doing anything with spin. Oh yeah. So landing comes down around 40. So we see that here's 14 yards of carry difference. That's a dramatic part. I know there's 10 more on average. Oh yeah. But there's so there's another piece of that puzzle which is the dispersion, the farthest left to right versus the farthest left to right. Yeah. Is our dispersion our side angle? is a lot Matter. tighter with it, right? For sure. You, you, have, you have one that gets away from it. And that's that. why I want, like, the big thing with that sim, that those misses were not good. Yeah. And I don't make a good move at it. It can be punishing. And another factor that, uh, we, as we look at this, is interesting too, and that is, um, this is actually a nine degree. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I get the nine degree and I turned it down one. If I don't increase spin. Yeah. I get that ball to carry farther. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm, I kind of looked at the face. I'm like, I see a little more loft there. Yeah. Didn't, didn't, I'm like, whatever, just going to hit it. Interesting. One of the things about loft is right. If we get too low lofted. Yeah. Um, that increases our side spin. Yeah. For it sure. can, it can actually move that ball more sideways for us. So if we increase the launch angle going more upwards, mm -hmm. it will stay in the air longer. Granted, if we don't, um, if we don't do anything with the backspin, yeah. if it stays where it was, hmm. it just stays in the air longer, but also a little straighter. Sneaky. Yeah, well, and I think part of that too is like, this, it's not necessarily distance for you, it was more about dispersion too. Yeah. But now our, our short ball goes 300 yards versus where we were back with yours and our short ball goes 280. Yeah. You know, there's, there's 20 yards of difference between our worst to worst. Yep but we're not going to see a whole lot of difference in our best to best yeah when which, you get which i knew would happen because that sim man when you got the right spot it's just yeah. going forever which that's why i got some guys that can hit it there every time right call more call still playing it for a reason so then we go back and also look at hit location right our average location was a little bit lower um as we talking about your your original driver your gamer Versus now, all of a sudden, we're a little high and high middle, although yep. this is a little bit lower. Now we're in the middle and up higher. So launch comes up, spin goes down, ball carries farther. Nice. So, you know, our potential, as we start talking about potential again, as we look at that optimizer, your potential is 317. Yeah. Your average is 307 versus our potential being 315 and average only being 297. And we notice is like, Launch comes up, spin comes down, ball speed's a little bit better. That's where we go. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I also think, um, you know, with the, the attack angle, right, being upward, when we catch that a little higher, yeah. we're going we're gonna to reduce some of that spin. It's only going to be better. Yeah. So I, I see your, your 320 out here. Um, yeah. But I definitely see your misses being more 300s rather than 280. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So that's what I would go with. I, I like this this as a setup. I go with this in that, that nine degree turn down one. Yep. Another thing we, we can do with it is there is the, this is in the neutral setting versus the draw setting. So that, that has to do with the, um, the lie angle on it. Let's put it into the D setting and see if the lie angle does anything to the hit location with that. That was hammered. Just a super high launch, but that's fine. Oh, no spin on it. What did I say sign me up for that one? That one wasn't quite as good, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah, bombs away. That's the best of the day. Yeah, that's 166. Oh, 18. Ooh, see ya. Yeah. Let's take a look at hit location. I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're just buttoned. Right, yeah, now we're just in the middle. Our, our ball speed's really close to that. You know, it's 165.9 on average. That's, I'll call it 166. But, and our launch is up even more, and our spin is down even more. Our peak heights even more. Our carries even more. Our totals, e like, I, like, <laughs> yeah. We talk about... <clears throat> getting we, those incremental gains Again, we right talk there. about, like, yeah, the, the home run ball is getting the best ball speed we can, the best launch and spin parameters, and the best direction. All right. There's your average. Your average <laughs> is way closer. Like, yep. so now, um, one of the things that we look at in, in terms of, uh, let's do this, is like, take a look at, at real quick, the idea of launch and spin. And one of the things that Ping as an engineering company has done extremely well, and I love this, is like, oh yeah, they're, they'll give us like, what would be the appropriate type of launch and spin for someone that's, that's around that 165 to 75 ball speed. Yep. So kind of towing this line, and then someone that comes up about five, maybe six degrees. Yep. We want to see something around 15 and 2100, 15, 2100, maybe 14 and 2300, 2200. So as we look at that, what's our average? 15 and 2100. Like the numbers, yep. te technically the numbers can't get yep. better, right? The question is just whether or not, you know, that went to your target. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, Which moving towards your target. Definitely getting there way more than my old one. And and one of the myths kind of one of the myths about the the changings that you can make in terms of the the shaft settings as you get going here. Uh, this isn't going to change your ball flight. What it's going to change is the angle that the club sits, right? Yep. So by having it in the minus 1 in the draw, we we have the ability to kind of turn that that toe up in the air. Yep. And by doing so, we just move the hit location around without you changing your swing. Sweet. Um, one of the things that we don't, uh, we, we don't have but is new to Callaway right now is they actually have a couple of different loft sleeves. Mm. They actually have a stronger loft sleeve um, and a weak. They also make one that's a flatter loft sleeve. I don't think I would go any flatter. Yeah. But may entertain putting the stronger loft sleeve on so that we could take it down yep. one or two degrees. If need be, yeah. If we can, right now, I, le I leave this as it is. <laughs> yep. I don't touch this. Because, I'm happy with that for sure. Because now your misses are 20 yards farther <laughs> and your average overall is at yeah. least 10 plus yards and straighter. Sweet. Yeah. Sign so. me up. All right, so let's summarize in terms of what we got done today. Okay. So we start off when the tailor made sim, yep. right? We go from eight degrees, which is turned open and down to six degrees. Yep. We get into the Callaway, the Paradigm X, or the Paradigm with the triple diamond. Yep. And I give you nine degrees. And we not only took our hit location from on the bottom yep. towards the middle and straight up, but we increased ball speed by about three miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, huge. Launch angle by about two miles an hour, or uh, two degrees. Yep. We reduced spin by about two or 300 RPM. I thought it was crazy. Yeah, and so we added about somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 yards of carry, another Can't 10 complain. yards of distance, and we also tightened up the dispersion. We talk about more ball speed, better launch, better spin, and more direction or dispersion. Yep. It's the home run. Yeah, can't want anything else. So I love this, it's nine degree. Uh, we're gonna turn it down to that minus one. We're gonna yep. leave it in the draw setting, which squared up our impact, yep. like right smack in the middle. We're gonna go with the Ventus Black 7X. This is the TR version, the new one. Okay, it's got a similar feel though, yeah. It is, so like you had, the, you, yeah, you had the, the Ventus Black, the original version of it. Yep. Um, it starts with Velocore, which is the, the core of it, or the center yep. of it, being ultra strong, ultra lightweight. That allows the uh, uh, Fujikura to make some, some changes in, in um, where the graphite gets positioned and mm -hmm. bends. But now they added this, uh, this uh, uh, wrap up yep. above that even strengthens the handle yeah and and really impacts like was even more solid as you were talking yeah. about yeah felt great to me yeah cool sounds good yeah.